Hello, welcome back to the channel. And it's been exactly a year since I had my solar panels and battery installed. So in today's video, I'm going to look back at the year, the stats, how much money I've saved, how much money I've made through seg payments, what my observations are, how it tied into predictions and all that sort of stuff. Um, so this also means it's been a, just about a year since I started making these videos. So I'd like to thank all um, 560 odd of my subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please uh, do. Um, it would be nice up to get to that thousand uh, pound mark. Looks like thousand pound mark. Um, thousand subscriber mark, so um, I can start monetizing the channel. I recently had a friend who was a bit bored and watched all my videos, um, and the number of adverts that appear before them is huge. So, um, if you're annoyed by that advert, we can't really get rid of them, but you, um, at least I can get some benefit if uh, you subscribe, and uh, I can get that number up above that thousand subscriber mark. Anyway, so let's go into some of the stats and information. So on the 24th of August 2022, uh, Glow Green um, Limited um, finished my installation of my uh, solar panels and battery system. And those solar panels are 12 Q-cell 385 watt um, panels mounted on a south facing roof um, in Swansea on top of a hill. Um, and that, the power from that feeds into a 5 kilowatt Solis hybrid inverter and that uh, energy can then be stored in a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive battery or goes into powering the house. As far as my tariffs are concerned, I've been, um, I'm locked into British Gas until next uh, March. Um, I fixed um, back in 2021. Um, on a two and a half year deal, so before the energy uh, prices started increasing massively. So I'm only paying 19.5p per kilowatt hour for import and about 23p on my stand in charge per day for electricity. For gas, um, I'm also with British Gas as a dual fuel deal uh, where I'm only paying 4p for gas and um, just checking, but seven, just uh, around 17p for the um, stand in charge. Um, and for my export, I am with So Energy, and they're currently paying 5p per kilowatt hour of export, which I know is pathetic, but um, it uh, will hopefully improve soon because I've realised that British Gas now offer an export tariff which is of a better amount of about 15p, so I might be switching, switching to that soon. Um, and this is also one of the, also the reason being tied into these prices means that this is the reason why I haven't already moved to Octopus Energy because the benefit from moving on to there doesn't seem to outweigh staying with British Gas for the next six months just with the winter coming up. So that's why I've stayed with that. I've had a number of comments about that. Okay, so um, just a little bit more information about the uh, stats that I'm going to show in this video and where they come from. Um, the amount that I pay in export is taken from my smart meter. Um, I uh, record that each day, take away the stand-in charge. So none of these figures include the stand-in charge figures. This is purely on import because I can't do anything about the stand-in charge. Um, the August values are made up with the first three and a half weeks of 2023 August and the last week of the 2022 August to make up the full month there. So I've added those two up. All the other months are made up of obviously the amount of electricity I've used, generated, and so forth in those months. Um, the export um, I've got from my uh, export meter, um, but it tallies well with the Solis Cloud app, and all other figures I've sort of come up with from the Solis Cloud app as well. And I try and record these all these numbers each day, and then accumulate them over time. Okay, so let's start off with my generation curve. So uh, this is what the generation curve looks like for a year. As you can see, it's what's known as a Gaussian peak in science. Um, we have a peak around the May-June time and then tailing off on either sides, which is what you expect. Um, although I would expect the peak to be more in June-July time. Um, we had a particularly sunny May and July was quite unspectacular and quite cloudy um, so that might be why that is it'll be interesting to look in years to come whether that actually shifts or whether actually with global warming and the movement of these sort of general 
or perception of movement of the seasons, if that's what's happening. Um, and you can see that in sort of January, again, about 200 uh, kilowatt hours produced, December about 180. Um, so that's the general shape of the graph. What this actually means for though, that over the entire year, we have generated 4,916 kilowatt hours. So to put that into perspective to the prediction made by Glowgreen when I wish went for the had the consultation for them where they'd run the figures, they were predicting that we'd have a solar generation of between 4,000 and 4,500. So we've exceeded that by um, at least uh, 9%. So that is good. Obviously though, it doesn't matter how much you generate when there's a Gaussian curve because if the numbers you are generating in say January are lower than your actual av than your actual usage for the month, you are still having to pay for import. So that's what I've done with this graph here. So this is my monthly energy or electricity consumption. Um, as you can see it's fairly stable around the uh, 200 kilowatt hours per month mark. Um, We've actually used over the entire year uh, 2,993 kilowatt hours. So, as I say, pretty much t um, 200 kilowatt hours per month, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but as you see, fairly consistent from this graph. So, the green, the blue on this graph is the um, using my own energy. So, you can see for the months of April, May, June, July, August, sort of September, and maybe March, we had we um, were actually very self-sufficient in terms of our electricity. Meanwhile, for months like January and December, the worst months for solar, um, we were uh, much more reliant on the grid in the region of about a quarter to a third reliant on the grid. Um, overall, we have been 85% self-sufficient on our electricity. So out of all the electricity we use, so that's 2,000... Um, 390, uh, actually 97 kilowatt hour, hours, um, we have been able to use, of that 2,029 have been generated ourselves, uh, which means we've had to import from the grid 367 kilowatt hours. So that's where that 85% uh, efficiency comes from. What we can also get from that is our savings. So if we were to use that, um, let's just call it 2,400 kilowatt hours for sake of argument. If we were to have paid for that, we would have given British Gas um, this within the last year period, £469.74, and uh, uh, sorry, 47 pence. What we actually sent to British Gas for import was £71.92, pence, which means we've saved three hundred and ninety seven pounds and fifty five pence um, on our import so that's uh, fairly good if we were on the price cap um, say the current one which is about 31p I know it's actually today it is dropping again more but let's say we were on that 30p price cap we could have added a half onto that so we'd have actually saved 600 pounds this year if we were on the higher price caps or cap price uh, cap of um, 34p we would have saved about 680 pounds so you can see where the savings could really come and how much the payback of um, solar can really ramp up depending on what your rate of electricity was as i say we were lucky that about two years ago we fixed with british gas at quite a low rate um, this means that the amount of money we're saving on electricity on import every day is about one pound and nine pence Okay, so we out of that uh, four thousand nine hundred ish um, kilowatt hours we generated, obviously we self consumed about uh, two thousand and thirty of them, which means there's another two thousand eight hundred odd, which has gone back to the grid. Actually, it's not. It's three thousand um, have as the don't gone back to the grid. Looking at the energy meter, there's a mistake in my spreadsheet. So I know there's about three thousand and ten have gone back to the grid. And at my five p rate, 
that would uh, that has generated me 150 pounds and 57 pence so that's okay as i say if i was on the, that new british gas tower for 15p um then that would be four times higher so that would be uh, 450 pounds so in the worst case best case scenario I suppose if you look at the savings um, for my system we would be talking um, over a thousand pounds if I was on that 34p price cap from the electricity companies and the highest um, seg pay standard seg payments um, which means that my payback for the, the system would be about eight to nine years currently though um, this year I've generated uh, 500 and 48 pounds which means my payback period if i was everything was to stay status quo would be uh about 16 years so uh with the going back to that export briefly so the average um, export per day is about 40p it means that my overall uh savings per year uh, or per day including so saving on electricity and the export amounts to um about one pound fifty ish so um, those are the main headline figures. We can delve a little bit deeper into the numbers. So the best day for solar was the 27th of May 2023, where we generated 33 kilowatt hours. And I think that's about the maximum that we could get um, with our system over a day. The worst day was um, the 10th of January, where we only generated 0.2 of a kilowatt hour. In terms of uh, export to the grid, we use normally use about six to seven kilowatt hours per day. Um, that means uh, um, so on the 13th of May we sent 28 kilowatt hours back to the grid, um, and our best day in terms of like sort of just payback on money was the 4th of June where we made £3.25 which basically was calculated from using 11 kilowatt hours of self-use and 22 kilowatt hours of export. Um, so I'd say these are just general uh, numbers, um, it depends on how you want to analyse things. If you're talking about also payback period, I have done another video where I talked about calculating payback and I said that sometimes it's not actually really applicable because you've added value to the house because you've got a capital asset now on your roof which may diminish over time so it sort of swings and roundabouts and depends on your point of view. I've already talked about one prediction which was the um, glow green prediction and I said we've exceeded that. Uh, sometime over the past year I made a video about um, trying to calculate um, how much you would save with your solar panels and your payback um, and I did a, uh, basically a spreadsheet which I showed you all where um, I assumed that we generated 4,500 kilowatt hours which was the best case scenario from Glowgreen. Uh, obviously we've as I said I've exceeded that and the total use was uh, per year was 2,500 kilowatt hours and then I applied assumptions of whether we were 100% reliant on our solar um, or just 60% reliant and every 10% increment in between and I sort of predicted that we would probably be around the 80% efficiency again we've been, we're better than that we're at 85% but if I look between the 80 and 90% um, from those predictions it actually works out exactly right so um, if According to those assumptions, if I was 80% um, self-sufficient, I would have made £525 this year. Um, if I was 90% efficient, it would have been 562 And we're pretty much slap bang in the middle of that, at the £550 mark. So at least my maths was correct there. Um, Let's talk about some other observations. So when I first applied to Grogley and they asked me my, my general energy consumption um, from uh, my past bills, which I estimated to be between 2,100 and 2,400 kilowatt hours. So we, from the looks of it, um, I was sort of underestimating on the 2,100 and the 2,400 was pretty much bang on. However, we have made some lifestyle changes which is probably why we're at the higher end of that estimate. So first of all, uh, my uh, heating is still with gas. 
and my hob is still a gas hob but I do have an electric oven um, and we did invest in an infrared heating panel which is upstairs in the, bed in the bedroom and then again I've got videos um, reviewing that. Um, what we have found is that we are um, using the slow, slow cooker more instead of using the gas hob. Instead of um, frying or yeah, griddle pan, uh, like French with burgers, steaks, whatever, um, instead of using the gas hob we now use the electric grill more. So we have had a slight increase in our electricity usage. I should also point out that this may not be entirely accurate because uh, if it's a particularly cloudy day and we don't have the power in the battery, um, we have um, used the gas hob as well because that's actually cheaper to use. So I'm not sure if we've used more gas or less gas. Um, uh, something else that I've probably changed is maybe I'm not as frugal with my electricity on days when there is high solar output. So for instance um, I've got a washing machine which has a eco mode on it so it's a four hour wash which doesn't keep the water quite as hot. I think it still uses the same amount of water as the hot wash which is only about um, a two hour wash. Um, what I found is if the day is particularly to be sunny then I'll put it on the hot wash instead um, but then saying that um, sometimes we wait an extra day to overload the washing machine or like really fill it up um, if I know there's going to be a solar day there anyway so again it's difficult to actually quantify whether those diff those are making a difference so the next question is what are my plans for the coming year um, well um, Hopefully, uh, at the moment, it's looking like I'm going to move to Octopus Energy in March, and then I can take advantage of their flux. Well, I'll try and calculate to see if there is a uh, advantage to going to one of their flux payments or whatever, something like the Agile or whatever other ones they have at the time go, um, to see if having variable export rates is beneficial. Um, and also just seeing what happens there. Uh, eventually we would like to turn this house from the gas central heating to electric. Um, we don't have a water tank, which makes, and it's a 1930s house, the pipes are quite small, the radiators aren't that big. So going for a heat pump may not be the best option for us. Although maybe an air to air one could be. But we are really hoping that uh, Tapio brings out their Zeb, which is compatible with combi boilers. Um, but also what we might also do is start putting more uh, infrared heaters in as we get more used to the one that's in the bedroom. So that might increase our electricity usage. Uh, longer term we do want to put an extension on the house um, which would be west facing. Um, it's our kitchen extension. There's already a bit of an extension there. It's all cold shed and the utility room. We also found that and so if we did that we'd probably change the roof to have solar panels then as well which will increase our daily yield especially in the summer. So that might be able to offset some of the extra electricity we'd have to import for those heating considerations. And obviously, um, we would probably, if we again with the boiler, we would change our cooker. So it was all an electric cooker as well. So that's been my views of the having the solar panels. It has been worth it for us. It's been um, looking for long-term investment. It seems to be reasonable. Yeah, there's probably people commenting saying if you wanted a better return you could probably find a maxi ISA or investment opportunities that will give you back 10% um, but those are also higher risk and you're not helping the planet so yeah oh talk about helping the planet um, I can also look in the app it looks like we've um, planted the equivalent of 2.9 trees maybe 2.6 trees and saved uh, about 4.9 tonnes of uh, CO2. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please subscribe and hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of my videos to come.